What's up everyone, this is Cher talking. welcome back to my channel. Today's video is Battle of Mountain Tafton, the last event related to Romancing Saga 3, the stage. This one we fight against Beauty in two of her lacades. Uh, these fairies have around 30,000 HP, it's not much, you just need one AoE attack to kill. And then you have to focus on Beauty, it's one wave. You can bring three characters and two trainees, it's pretty fast to farm. It's kind of similar to Honeywell event that was in the past. Well, before we go, let's talk about some other stuff, like limited time ability. Here we have Slash, Pierce, Romancing Saga 3 and others. In the past event we had Shadow instead of Slash, so we have more things to cover for some people here. Uh, slash, Pierce, Romancing Saga 3, you can just check here the other one. Let's go. Limited time ability. Shadow Pierce. Okay, so uh, it's good to bring a slash damage dealers to train here. With that said, let's go and look the shop. We have some good stuff here to get, like this dragon head piece, an accessory for mages. Uh, this weapon here is made for Ludwig, but it's not that strong. You can keep it or forge a better one. Gold pieces, platinum tickets, books. I am missing books. And finally, six amplification badges at once, because it's a double banner, I guess that's why they gave this. So for my first strategy, I have Rainbow Rangers formation, and it centers around using Mikeyu as a damage dealer. Well, he is good because of all charged, he buffs Monali up, so the characters attack after him will get an uh, increase in damage. And after Mikeyu, I have Yon Gustav, he's going to do a lot of damage with Triple Crush, still unmatched. And then you can decide if you want someone in the intelligence position, that can be either Bune or someone like Shendu. Or if you want someone in the agility position, that can be Valdor, Boston, they work just well. Another one that should work is Global Axazami, but I don't have her, so I cannot showcase. But Mikhail will attack before the martial artist, if you decrease the agility of the martial artist. And that will help do much more damage. Look, Morali up. Now, triple crush. Pretty fast. Now the deck strategy brings a combination of Madeline. She has... Damian Burst on 13 and Luna Fuguru on 6, this needs Inheritance. Then I have Arthur, he's gonna use his fast attack infinity trajectory. And Christmas Rupina with Inheritance of Crossbreak. Many people have those two characters and it makes it work and you can bring two trainees. In this case the weapons I'm using have around 80% increase in damage. Or close to. So yeah, the damage is pretty high. Arthur kills the ads, Urpina deals 140,000, and Luna Fulgur with Madeline deals the remaining. Now for the next strategy, I bring Deadly Pierce X, and I bring someone in the front line with fast attack. It can be this Monica or Zeno with Noble Cross, and then I focus on single target attacks with Rofus in the top with Gun and Blade, and in the Back I have Claudia and she can use Reveritory Shot if you have, if not just use Heart Seeker Plus to trainees allow it. Okay, Noble Cross deals much more than needed and will kill the ads, deal a little damage on Bune itself. But the king here is Rofus. Slash and Sito is just insane. Now, if you don't have that inheritance, you can try something different. Let's say Madeline Platinum Style has Demilune Burst, and you can amplify it to Demilune Burst Plus. So she will attack the adds first, and then she's going to use a single target attack. That's pretty good. She also buffs the squad slash damage. A Platinum Style with um, premium levels. Then Final Emperor is going to use Double Dark Blade if you have, and then Mystic Acelus can use her Rosario Impale Plus, it's not even max it, I'm gonna train this till it gets level 99. And two trainees allow it as well. Okay, so being on the front line allows Madeline to go first. That's exactly what she's going to do. Yeah, that really helps. 
Double Dark Blade still very powerful to this day. 160,000 damage. Rosario and Peyo. Whoa, it didn't kill on this run. So you see that not being maxed in hurts. But should be easy if I train to level 99. And a premium character that works pretty similar to how Madeline works is Gustav. He has this attack called Flaming Steel Wave, that it's AoE and then it becomes single target, so pretty nice. And then in the back I'm bringing Gustave with his triple crush again, and the newest version of Ellen. She has a 4S attack for turn 1 damage, it's pretty powerful, and a way to train that as well. There we go. Flaming Steel Wave, kills the first enemies. Some damage against Beauty. Deadly Spin. Three characters pretty fast, huh? Now we have Amazon Red X again with the match rock in the front line. She will buff everyone with Shining Glory and QD adds. And two other very powerful attackers. We have Jen. He's not even close to Max. In my opinion, he's going to do a lot of damage when he is. And there is also Alosis, Alosis with Scorching Hell, and this will be very close to killing, my weapons are around 80% too, and you can bring two characters in the back to do remaining damage if you cannot finish with those three. So I'm using UDX Matriarch because she has the highest agility between all of her versions, and I want to guarantee that she goes first. Killing the ants. Now we're gonna do buffed damage with Alosis and Gen. My Gen is level 34 only. That's why he's even attacking after many people here. Life Sprinkler, if used with a fully maxed again, is going to do like 170,000 or something. Well, that was the last strategy. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it helps you with your farming. If you wanna subscribe, please do. It will help the channel. And I hope to see you soon in the next video. Bye.